Hey everyone, welcome to Myopia Morning. This up. Uh, our once a month segment on Myopia Defender Childhood where we look at an old TV show. This week, if you couldn't tell already, we're talking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um, the late 80s and early 90s TV like slugfest. Like, everyone was on it, man. Um, and I'm sure you remember. Interesting to me because, as someone who grew up watching it, you know, the Eastman and Laird comics are so bleak, so dark, so satirical, so silly, right? So, moment of exposition followed by grim, gruesome violence. Um, compared to the movies, of course, which are very cartoony. Um, Jim Henson puppets and the like. The video games which followed, all of that feels much more like this animated show. And so it's kind of fun to look back on it since it's been rebooted more than anything else we've talked about so far. But um, I think you'll see it's kind of that pre-Simpsons animation where everything is kind of drib and drab and not particularly fun. However, um, I think we're off to a good episode. Um, with that in mind, uh, if you're listening to this when it comes out or soon thereafter, September 7th at 7.45 p.m., Cineprov, I'm going to be there as one of the riffers on the incredible two-headed transplant, which having done a, some rehearsal and seeing it, my God, is it a bad movie. Uh, but yeah, hope to see you there. Meet some of our fans. Additionally, if you are interested in being a part of the show or, you know, kind of figuring it out, we're looking for some fan um, feedback and we'll, we'll read it on the air and we'll talk about it. So follow us on Facebook, um, join the myopia group, follow us on Twitter, at Myopia Pod, and uh, give us a review on iTunes. I'll read any five star review that are written um, in some of these introductions. So uh, please, and if you're interested in history, I don't usually plug this. Uh, me and a friend of mine, Alex Cummings from Georgia State University, do a history podcast called Doom to Repeat. And we've had some interesting podcasts. Uh, in this season, one on the anti-vax movement, one on segregation, one on Russia. Uh, one's coming out on Sanctuary Cities soon. Um, and yeah, we're putting together quite a story. So um, please tune in there. Also rate and review us on iTunes. Um, and found us on SoundCloud as well. Thanks. And I'm Cleus Jacobs. We're here to tell you about our podcast, The Earth Station, DCU. Join us every week as we discuss the DC Universe. We talk everything DC, including comics, television, the cinematic universe, and so much more. We look forward to bringing you some great reviews and discussions. And don't forget, read, read more comics. comics. Welcome to Myopia Mornings. This week, we've changed the title of the podcast, <laughs> and we have watched, I guess, in honor. <laughs> Next week, Myopia Evenings, <laughs> where we watch Cinemax. <laughs> <laughs> we watch, like, a, a, a heavy metal or something, one of those weird animated movie yeah. porn. <laughs> a cool world. <laughs> God, those movies. <laughs> Uh, we're off to a good start. We're off to a great start. Excellent I was just thinking start. of, I was thinking of the term jiggle physics when I. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, <laughs> and a, uh, oh god, a Tomb Raider. Stay tuned because when they reboot it this fall, we're going to do it for myopia. Um, but let's get back to kind of what we're talking about. Um, I guess in honor of the fact that our movie podcast started with Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we thought we should get to this pretty early on. Uh, so we did Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1987. Um, I guess, like last time, before we get too far into this, did you guys have a background with this show? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I watched this show all the time, knew the song by heart, dressed up as a little, little Michelangelo, ran around with the neighbor kids. Oh, yeah, my mom made the puff paint t-shirts. No the way. different Ninja Turtle. Yes, the way. Yeah. My brother was like Donatello or die. Yeah. There's an incredible uh, piece of art uh, hanging in my 
parents' laundry room, which is where you put the good art. Uh, something that I drew when I was five. I believe it's Raphael. It is an incredible piece of art. Uh, I think we all just uh, learned something about your parents that they, <laughs> that they framed your five-year-old art. That's, that's good. It's not the only piece of art they have framed that I drew before I was ten. So, won't be the last. Whatever that means. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, than... that may be the best thing to come out of the series. Yeah. So clearly, this given was the rewatch, Ninja Turtles. And you know, I mean, I I've never, still never read any of the comics and and stuff. So this and this came out before the movies. So I mean, the show was was Ninja Turtles. I had all the action figures. Probably still do somewhere. This uh, was something that me and my brothers could agree on watching. Yeah. Like you know, in the when we were younger and we had like the one TV in the house that we actually got to watch. This was. There was never a fight when Ninja Turtles was on. We actually both. Unless you were fighting as Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Well, that was after the episode. Who were you? You were Raphael. I was Raphael. Yes, actually. (laughs) No one wanted to be April. Even in all these episodes, she shows up late to everything. April doesn't want to be April. April. Ever. Where's the action, guys? Uh, I look how like her trademark is that horrible yellow jumpsuit. Oh, Oh, man. And her hair gets bigger in every scene. Her one they, accomplishment. Her close-ups. <laughs> they can't fit her whole head in the frame. <laughs> because she has too much hair. It's like our buddy Michael's uh, driver's license photo with the Afros. Oh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, is, yeah. Which is for no one else except for me right now. Um, but yeah, I guess, as you alluded to, it, it's kind of rough going. Uh, yeah. The theme song is great. Um, between like 85 and 93, the theme songs on TV shows were incredible. Yeah. I mean, and you will remember every word to every single one. Oh, yeah. I've been astonished. Like, Scott and I watched this together. And um, just, I don't know if it's something about these things at this particular age in which we watch them, but every single bit of it is seared upon my brain. Whereas things like what I had for lunch today, couldn't tell you. Yeah. Well, who cares about that? But you care about, like, Still the Ninja Turtles theme song. What you ate for lunch today? That's what ago. Instagram's for. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to remember. Oh man! Oh yeah, we knew every word to this. Aaron was dancing around on the couch. It was wonderful. And then the episode started. Yeah, that's a shame. It went downhill <laughs> at that point. Um, so we chose like last time, uh, three random episodes, and then one was taken down from YouTube for copyright reasons. So we chose another random episode. Um, so we'll do them in the order they got released. Um, because why not? It's as good as any reason. Um, the first one we did uh, was one of Scott's choices. Uh, Scott and Aaron, whoever. One of you figured it out. We found it. This was all Scotty. Um, it's all me, buddy. And it was called Shredder Rises or something like that? I think like it was that? called Enter the Shredder. Enter it's the, the Shredder. second episode because we could not find access to the pilot. But uh, the, the whole the whole background studio. story is in the song. So you don't really need a pilot. You know, you just watch the theme song. Yeah. But yeah, so this was the second episode. It's got the Shredder. It's got Krang. It's got... The Technodrome. Bebop and Rocksteady, I believe. It's got a Technodrome. Um, a great name for anything. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever you got to name something. A kid or a restaurant or a <laughs> evil <laughs> evil underground sewer palace. Technodrome. With an eye on the is top amazing. for some reason. Yeah, I know. What, what was that? <laughs> well, and, it, it, and also, I mean, because we have nothing good to say, we should talk about the theme song. In that, <laughs> all the best parts from everything we saw are in the theme. Like the Technodrome driving along is there, then beating up some robots on the Technodrome is, it's yeah. all in the theme song and it's oh, kick yeah. ass and then all of a sudden the animation budget is slashed. It's as though the elevator pitch was the theme song. Yeah. They yep. said go and then the rest of the budget was for the entire rest of the season. Ugh. <laughs> yeah. They got some good voice work though. Maybe these guys were in uh, Famous before. I mean, everything Raphael says, like go watch, go find an episode on YouTube and watch and be like um, anything Raphael says which is he doesn't get one good line in any of the episodes we saw yeah, he didn't get, no. really get anything to do and any, they, they hadn't figured out what to do with Raphael he has a terrible weapon he has a terrible attitude they don't know what to do with him but yeah. Rob Paulson is doing the voice so everything he says is just Yakko it's Yakko from Animaniacs just doing being really snarky having his little joke his little Groucho jokes and I was like that's just kind of pulling me out of it but I like it because Rob Paulson's going to be in every episode we do apparently 
right now. <laughs> well, and I kind of like Rob Paulson in that he he's a person. Like, because the other person who's going to be in everything is Frank Welker, and all he does is animal sounds. Uh, and uh, but here we have Rob Paulson being Rob Paulson as Raphael, who's um, God, he's cool but crude. Yeah. <laughs> hey, give me a break. <laughs> I wrote that down too. This is the most me- like they're riffing on their own title track. Yes, like their theme song oh, yeah. is playing, and they're making fun of the Raphael. In one of the, yeah. one of these episodes, Raphael throws a foot soldier across the room, and he's like, "Hey, you're a rude dude." <laughs> <laughs> like that's out of the theme song. <laughs> well, and we have Donatello who speaks like. A nerd, like he's he's doing uh yeah. God, he's doing Steve Urkel, oh. and we have a surfer dude, then we have an asshole, and then we have Leonardo who's trying to be like, come on guys, yeah. Jeez. They he's gave like Leonardo Piranhas. at least like a normal like, yeah, I'll listen to that guy if he's if he's saying let's go do a thing, let's split up. Like Leonardo's got a leadership voice, but yeah, I noticed that too. Like, well, Donatello's smart, so make him sound like a nerd. All right, check. Uh, Michelangelo's a party dude, so. Uh, We'll make sure he sounds like he's from the valley and, and uh, Raphael, like whatever, Raphael. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, and then we have Splinter, who sounds like Which is very a true to life. Yeah, no one... everyone was like Michelangelo, yes, Raphael. <laughs> Which is why the movie, and if you listened to our very first Myopia, you know this about the movie that they made, is all about uh, how uh, Raphael feels left out and he goes, yeah, off on his he own goes off on his own and does his own thing because of stuff we're saying right now about how like Raphael doesn't get written anything he's just written out and at the same time you're like well I know Raphael paintings I don't know shit that Donatello did well or in the second movie where he gets feels left out so he leaves or in the third movie where he gets left, left out, out and he leaves leaves <laughs> and ends up in seeing jail a pattern here yeah. no one likes to write for him because he's the asshole in a telling show. you they wrote the theme song <laughs> and from the theme song that that Bread, 10 years of car- cartoons, three movies, two more movies, and two more series. <laughs> and it's, it is literally how little kids learn how to tell jokes because it's literally wah, 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 wah. Wah, wah. And that's the joke. That's <laughs> yes. every joke. They're not funny. And there's no. a gap as though there's a laugh, like a laugh track. And nothing is ever funny. It's awful. It's 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 brain numbing. At least with a little kid's show, there's a like supposed to be a moral. And at the end, you're like, okay, fine. He shouldn't have been a jerk to that other turtle. That's not what this is. They don't even do that. No. Okay. The, no. Is it the is it this Enter the Shredder episode? I think where Splinter starts hounding on Michelangelo for like for uh, rushing too patient. much or yeah, not, not being, being patient. patient. And he's just kind of throwing himself around and stuff. And you think, oh, yeah, this is going to come up later in the big fight scene. Yeah. Michelangelo's going to have to learn patience and save the day. And everyone wins. And that never happened. No, no. they just left that one on never the Never comes floor. back. Splinter gives no advice later. He's barely in. I know we did a random sampling. I'm sure he's all over this show. But he's not really in any of these. And, uh, and neither is Raphael. But, like... Yeah, no real moral here. Yeah. No, let's tie things up in a nice bow for next week. Nothing to take away. If you're a parent, like, you know, putting your kid in front of this show. The only funny we parts were the this? occasional, very self-aware one-liners. Yeah, the only funny yeah. things. They do little, yeah, little little self-aware meta jokes for adults. Yeah. No, well, hey, Shredder, you're not getting away. This isn't the Shredder show. <laughs> well, I mean, and let's be clear. This is literally the second episode, so it should all be setting up these characters. Yeah. Um, and we do, like like you alluded to, get the creation of Bebop and Rocksteady when they literally steal uh, a rhino and a warthog and yeah. then pour goo on them. Oh, yeah. Um, and which Shredder Precious still has his goo. mask underneath the <laughs> yeah. hat suit, which I got to laugh at because that's yeah. literally the dumbest thing um shredder's a weird character yeah he doesn't do anything right yeah he just argues with krang well krang if you yell at me one more time i, I ought to shredder and then, he, and then he just goes and does what krang wants and uh doesn't ever fight anyone but they do set up that backstory of like shredder and and uh, splinter. splinter had you know had beef and they were both great ninjas mm. and you don't see that they had ever real tasty at all. japanese beef mm. <laughs> These are like super racist voices, right? Because they're all white guys here. Uh, yeah, there's no Japanese 
voice actors on this show. Well, I don't but think. Even Mr. Miyagi is not. Oh, turtles! Yeah, well, it's really dumb. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, like it's don't. really awful. <laughs> it's really this true. isn't Breakfast at Tiffany's where they have never met a Japanese person <laughs> and don't know what oh. they sound like. Oh, <laughs> Mickey Rooney! Mickey Rooney! Thank you. I almost oh. said Mickey Rourke. I'm like that's a very different movie. <laughs> <laughs> Breakfast at Tiffany meets the wrestler. Just I'm it. <laughs> I came here for a croissant. <laughs> <laughs> Man, what happened to Mickey Rourke? Anyway, different show. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine happened to Mickey Rourke. Um, mm. <laughs> some cocaine floating around. Plastic this surgery. Show. Um, so essentially, this episode is pretty cut and dry. They they have the Technodrome. It's drilling through the Earth. April O'Neil is trying to follow the story. She's ten steps behind the plot, like a you know, like the chief of police in a slasher film. What ends up happening? There's no police on the show, by there's, the way. There's, there's oh, no yeah. one in the city. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Turtles do emerge from the sewers, run around in traffic. Nothing happens. Occasionally in whiteface. <gasps> that was they, weird. That they was the did second white episode. Face. They did whiteface on a quest that for cheese. That was weird. Uh, yeah, but, you know what? Let's just jump on because these are shows. I think we can... I, my brain has merged all three episodes together, so... The second, episode, second episode. the second episode we did was from the third season. It's called The Fifth Turtle. Um, and this, I, essentially, oh, right. um, they harassed Donatello to go pick up some um, mozzarella. So him and Roth go to the grocery store in, like, the most terrifying masks I've ever seen. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's whiteface. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's like the Joker mask makeup. Like, it's really creepy. Um, yeah, it's scary. They're all dressed like a flasher in Times Square, too, if you don't know. Like, giant trench coats, fedoras. Fine. Um, they get. They're about to get mugged. Um, oh right! Yeah, yeah, they're about to get mugged. Uh, and then this little kid dressed up like a ninja turtle comes in on like a skateboard or something, and tries to fight off the thugs, um, which throws off the timing of the turtles. But the bad guys run away, and the kid essentially fanboys all over the turtles. Yep. Yes. Scene. Scene. This is an interesting idea of a little kid who wants to join superheroes. Um, it's something that since Marvel movies have done, which we talked about in Amazing Spider-Man, I think there's... Iron Man 3, uh, Dark Knight Returns, uh, what are we, well, The Incredibles, in the entire movie The Incredibles is based on this. Well, and even in The Dark Knight, Dark they have Knight. that gang of Batman that uh, attack the bank yes. robbers. Yep, yeah. yep. It's a cool idea, and it's for a little kid show to talk about why it's okay to do things sometimes. Like, again, yeah, this is one of those every that kid watching. Is going to have a message. Yeah, yes. yeah, exactly. Yes. Every kid watching this show dresses up as a ninja turtle, right? And they're like, "Oh man, if I was, if I lived in New York, not if the turtles were, were real, but if I lived in New York, I would go seek out the turtles." Yeah. Right now, and this is this episode is what would happen. Yeah. And uh, and I guess it does make it, you know, makes it like okay for that to happen. You know, he gets ragged on by his brother and uh, even the turtles at first. But no, no. And that's where Splinter comes in. Right? That's where Splinter comes in <laughs> because he actually bows to because the kid figures out how to track the turtles by putting paint in their van yeah. and then follows the paint. Mm. And then Shredder's like. Instead of just following them. Yes. When he had eyes on well, them yeah. the whole time. And then Splinter's like, you've shown that my turtles have gotten lazy, which I think is a metaphor. For. Um, and then, I'm, but I want to make it clear. Sure, there's a point. In, there's in a, in that, yeah, in the in that Simpsons, episode. In 22 minutes, they can have two or three plots with a first act, second act, and third act, and they interweave and they collide at the end. That's a very yes. Simpsony. Yeah. We haven't even gotten to the plot of the episode, which is that the planets have aligned so that crystals have more power. Oh my god! To power the Technodrome, right? Because. Question mark. Because, right. because <laughs> yes. Krang, because, basically. Yeah, because Krang. <laughs> Krang's got his body at this point. Well, yeah, in the which first I had episode, the he said he was going to have his body. And once he got his body, he was going to bring over all the aliens to take over the Earth. But yep. I'm guessing that didn't but work then we jumped out. Because by season and... three, he's got a body and no and brain the alien. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Krang wants to harness the power of things. Things. Right. To do things so that things. Exactly. Yeah. That's basically the, the quote, plot of this episode. Even though the plot's really 
fanboy. And this was the one where they go into that lab to get the crystals, and the lab was somehow oh, man. booby trapped. Tesla would love this place. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> it's got like a giant Foucault's pendulum for some reason. Yeah, yeah. He's like crawling around. And oh yeah, he almost dies. Yeah. I was like, Shredder turns a thing who on. Who made and it's this just like laboratory? A ball of electricity bigger than all of them here. It was like a Galaxy Quest where they're all. <laughs> yeah. It was exactly well, Galaxy. Well, I mean Quest. that's what it is too. It's a generic laboratory too. There's just things in it, like like because that's what it is like you go to Emory University and they have just the generic lab where you can do science and things <laughs> that's right? right but, here, but here's the here. thing that was supposed to be the planetarium I think yes Right. Which matters. <laughs> no, no, it does. Because that was in the plot. Like, that was Krang's thing. Or we'll, we'll, we'll meet him at the planetarium. We'll do this there. And, so uh, when Mercury's in retrograde, we can power charge the crystals. I mean, yeah. again, if there isn't a Coke party going on somewhere, oh, man. it's a waste of yeah. 1989 or whatever year this is. get there, and it's like, oh, the planetarium. There's nothing fun about this room <laughs> for a Ninja Turtles fight. So let's just add some cool Tesla shit and uh, weird experiments and uh, that makes sense. Sure, why not? Is this... No, it's the next one. <laughs> there's aliens in this world. I mean, and not just crazy. There's aliens. There's tons of robots. And I no mean, human beings. This no is a world with, yeah. like, one child, his brother. Like, no wonder he yeah. goes out at night. Like, yeah. there are no parents. <laughs> yeah, no parents. No schools. <laughs> no hope. There's planetariums, but they're full of incredibly dangerous machines. Yeah. <laughs> so you can't go there. <laughs> It's a terrible, terrible place, and we need turtles. <laughs> to mutant fix turtles. Mutant turtles. Mutant ninja turtles. To rule it. <laughs> Dude, we're out of shredded mozzarella. Like this. Yeah. this That's how that episode starts. All of this happens because they needed shredded mozzarella. There was something yep. sinister at the Circle K. That's it. Oh, we got man. that. Um, Trouble's afoot. Uh, uh, hey, there we go. That's a pun. It's a foot clan. Oh, it's from the tick. <laughs> <laughs> Fuzzy bastard. Don't give me credit. No. <laughs> Not that smart. But you you all got it. You all got it, listeners at home. This is episode two. You can use we'll that. Figure it out. You can use that one. <laughs> Feel free. Um so uh, um Yeah, no moral at the end of that episode. Who nothing knows? happens. I don't even remember how they, they uh take they take the kid home and the brother is all like did you find some and uh the bully and, brother. And he's like as a matter of fact, I did. And they turn because a giant van full of mutant turtles is like twenty feet away. <laughs> and they're like, Thanks, bruh. And they and they drive off, and then the brother's like, Man, I will never treat you poorly or make fun of you again well, except that doesn't happen he just goes oh and then it's over well and There's again no moral no no what the line should have been is something like uh hey kid you want to join us on our next mission and he's like no thanks guys i should be a kid you know something like that yeah yeah learn a lesson <laughs> first of all we have that damn phoenix jones guy in like portland who thinks he's a superhero like we just you shouldn't encourage people to jump off of buildings and fight crime like yeah. you just shouldn't so what was the appeal of this show then because this show was immensely popular and again oh, so many popular. spinoffs so many movies which i saw yep. i went and saw the movies oh, and yeah. love them and i can't like on rewatch i can't really understand why this show caught on the way well, that that's the thing with um late 80s you know to mid 90s shows is that they're paced and drawn and kind of directed in such a way that doesn't resonate now um if you watch like anything i mean i mean that's what this show is all about is if you watch anything from that era the pacing is so slow and really off from what you kind of watch now not even now just like it's probably the simpsons ruining it for everyone yeah. oh is the simpsons like you were saying can pack can do a three act structure in the first four minutes before it sets up what the episode's about mm -hmm. and and it's very rapid fire a lot happens there's a lot of characters to juggle and they do it all somehow and they've been doing it since and two years and after this show came out after ninja turtles came out so by the time like in season three when the simpsons really started figuring it out you know, it's only 1990. Meanwhile, all the other shows have animation limitations. Uh, uh, you know, they're used to certain pacing for jokes and stuff like for kids. But the Simpsons aims at adults and not kids. 
And suddenly, you know, we watch a show like this. We're like, why is this scene so long? Why is it taking so long for them to say anything? Why is there a big pause after a joke? Like, what is the deal? And this is not the only show or movie or animated movie like that we've watched that's like this. I mean, you watch like a... Uh, a Don Bluth movie yeah. and they're still good like American Tales still really good Sacred and M still really good but like pay attention to the pacing of those movies yeah and it's very noticeable it's very noticeable how different it is and I think it's because of the animation style well I mean and l- like let's be clear here this is a show we remember but it's a very cookie cutter show like we, we, we already talked about X-Files it could be any show from the late 80s effectively because the pacing's the same the animation's the same and then like you said 1989 when the the first season of The Simpsons animation is kind of crap too. Yeah, it's a lot like. By the time we get to the early '90s, um, it's affecting everything because Animaniacs is much quicker, and it's '92 yeah. yep, by yep. the third season of The Simpsons. Yep. This is crap, and uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I guess we can get a little bit to our teaser for next episode. I won't do the full one yet, but um, by the time we get to the third show, we're talking about Nicktoons, and the Nicktoons, which come out in the early two- '90s, are very influenced by because all of them are very rapid fire all of them are much better quality animation and all of them have things like plots that interweave throughout even something like uh, Rugrats which has uh, two little mini episodes within it it's much more tightly packed this feels like nothing is happening it feels like a slog yeah slog is the word I've been thinking of all day is because I mean we watched the first two episodes they're 22 24 minutes long and you know we're gonna watch another one and I'm like oh man we have to slog through one more of these. Yeah, I was bummed because with Animaniacs, I put like all three on and we I watched them back to back to back. I think we watched four more episodes of Animaniacs after the three we watched for the episode. Like we were just like, oh, let's just keep watching them. Because, or what? let's watch a Chicken Boo or let's watch a Pinky in the Brain. No. And of course, Animaniacs has segments, has skits for the most part. For the most part, they're broken up into three, four different episodes within each one um so they can go really fast but i mean nothing i mean really nothing goes faster than the warner brothers well and i mean and and just to plug into this moment (laughs) just to plug into this moment rob paulson is in both right and it just shows how much he's wasted in this because here he's literally given nothing to do yeah he's given the worst character and and nothing good to say and no direction because he's just literally giving the same inflection for every line oh yeah and by the time animaniacs comes out just a couple years later he's Literally, that joke, the whole show is based on sarcasm, which is really hard to do if you're not an actor, like on screen. He's sarcastic through a cartoon character. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's yeah. Me. Oh, yeah. I mean, go, I mean, go look this show up on IMDb and, you'll, and just flipping through, you know, like the dad from Fresh Prince is Shredder. Yes. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I saw that. Never would have placed that without looking it up. No. So there's people. You in, just blew my mind yeah, right now. You'll, you look through the cast and you're and you're just thinking. I mean, okay, they got they got real people to do the voice work. Um, you just didn't give them a whole lot Not to do. Not necessarily. No, I was probably watching a couple of different shows in the 80s than you guys were. Sure. Um, for instance, like Jim and the Holograms, Ew. which I have watched some of um, as an adult. Don't watch that um, movie that came out a couple of years ago. No. No movie came Sacrilege. out. Sacrilege. <laughs> <That's exactly laughs> didn't right. happen. Um, We've all forgotten. I even feel Good like man. those were, were a little bit better paced than, than Ninja Turtles. And... Again, with uh, with Jem, I think that there were usually two two stories packed into the twenty minutes, or yeah, the twenty four minutes or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But at least I don't know. Maybe they recognized that they didn't have enough meat to make make one story go yeah. for a full twenty four minutes. But I mean, you can't even watch any show now, any half hour show, comedy or, or whatever that has one storyline. No. For no. 30 minutes, for 20 minutes, whatever the show is. No show does that. They all juggle because they all, you know, you have enough characters. Every show has enough characters where you can have two storylines at least. Well, and or it, a running joke along with the story, like something to break it up so that there's like something serious, maybe, but then there's, you know, some idiot in the background has, you know, I mean, every show does it. And then even some but of the other cartoons that came out during that time, like G.I. Joe was a big one for my brothers. Oh. And it that always ended, at least, it did have the moral. You know, you could walk away with, I don't know, whatever. Don't do drugs. Yeah. 
play nice with your neighbors, what, whatever it was. Yep. Um, you know, <laughs> don't it, get into a land war with uh, in, Asia. in Asia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll make a promise. If we do when when we do GI Joe, <laughs> we'll do the one where they go to. Or no, this is uh, Transformers where they go to Carbamia. There's a wow. Middle Eastern country called Carbamia. Um, but I mean, I do remember that. That. Wow. <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> We're totally doing that. Oh, just sorry, that episode. Just I mean, that episode. It's gonna get a little one off. <laughs> to, to your point, <laughs> it was sometimes at the very end, or the Sonic the Hedgehog show, where they had like Sonic says or knowledge is power, like the end where there was like the moral at the end, and it was very on the nose. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you don't leave the burners on the stove, or your house will burn out. It might not have nothing to do with the episode. Yes. Yeah. But there was something here. It's just kind of like uh, let's pad, guys, pad it out a little bit. Yeah. Oh man. I mean those scenes with Krang. I mean there's always. In the episodes we saw, okay, we haven't even talked about the third one. Third one is like Robocop and like Giuliani and and a commentary on Giuliani's like I'm gonna arrest everybody and it's <laughs> Leonardo's on his own with April and a robot. That's about it. Anyway, um, oh man, nope, lost my train of thought. Okay, so yeah, <laughs> the third episode is called Leonardo Renaissance Turtle. It's from the last season, the fifth season. And it's this weird, there's a new robot called Lex-1 and created by a, a German scientist. Yeah, a German scientist. Mindbender. Mindbender. Mindbender, thank you. Oh. Um, who, because he's a fascist and wants to be super militant, he's a German. And the idea is that this guy will eliminate crime by arresting everyone for everything. Yep. Yeah. So the other turtles go on vacation because like they're going to stop a bank robbery and it's literally stopped before they get there by Lex. So they all go away except for Leonardo who doesn't trust him. Yeah. And we realize that Leonardo is the most boring character in the show. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, Everyone knows which he's the I most did boring actually character. recognize when I was a kid. Yes. Yeah, it's like mm. just like Cyclops and X Men, the leader character is the, the least leader's interesting. always the yes. least interesting. Yeah, as the host of a podcast, I get this. I am oh, the yeah. least interesting. Absolutely, person. without fail, always the least interesting. Aww. And um, so him and April are literally walking around when they're caught jaywalking and about to be thrown in jail. This is what made me think of Giuliani because he was the one who cracked down on the jaywalkers. You know, the whole uh, broken window mentality of law enforcement. You stop the people from breaking the windows, there's not going to be higher crimes. <laughs> Whatever. It was a thing. The, the 90s was a weird time, kids. And this is social commentary from the Ninja Turtles. So there you go. <laughs> they were putting breakfast cereal on pizza in one episode, weren't they? They yep. were. Okay, Saw moving that. on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so Lex goes crazy. He arrests the mayor for wearing mismatched socks. Mm, well, I mean, obviously. Communist. Um... And that's it. Leonardo has to learn how to be like all the other turtles. Yep. He has to learn yeah, how to, to ride overall. a skateboard like Michelangelo. Which he doesn't do. How to fix some computers like Donatello. Sort of. Doesn't he do that when he just like kicks it? He well, does. Sort of. Sort he of, just sort kicks of. it. And then uh, he has to tell a joke at the very end to be like Raphael because they totally forgot what Raphael brings to the table. And that's when the producers fired all the other voice actors and just had Leonardo for the last six episodes before the show was canceled. Uh, this was atrocious. I mean, and, and not unlike X Men, you could tell. What's your two point. least favorite characters? It's April and Leonardo yeah, for twenty a minutes. Whole episode. Yeah. That was a to, long twenty. I mean, minutes. think of this setup. Like to just what we were just talking about about splitting characters up, letting them have separate storylines to kind of make the time pass better. They let Michelangelo, Donatello, and Raphael go on vacation and never followed up with them. There's no storyline there. <laughs> They come back at the end when they're like, oh, there's danger. We didn't realize it. But not, at no point is there three minutes with Donatello or three minutes here. It's still all Leonardo maybe calling them. And then you cut over to one of them being, you know, the, the, the communicator to answer off. the phone. Yeah. And then it cuts back. There's no. What, what do Michelangelo like and Raphael do at a swamp for a week? I wonder. But well, we it's like don't a know now. Door. And it's a closed door we'll forest. He's like, whoops, I missed you. Ugh, stupid. But so when we did Animaniacs, Ugh. I hadn't seen it in years. Um, but I was like, oh, yeah, the damn hippos are showing up. And I like and it came back to me when I saw those giant frogs that Roth and Michelangelo were hanging out with. Did, did you guys remember who they were? But they were like just in the swamp with similarly sized frogs wearing shirts like the battle toes or something oh. and, they were, and they were just like having a picnic lunch apparently 
Were we I've supposed already to know forgotten characters? that scene. <laughs> I watched this like three hours ago, and I've already forgotten what you're yeah, talking no about. Yeah, no idea. No idea. They were definitely having fun with that, though. Somebody yeah. in the writer's room thought, well, what would they be doing out in the, you know, the Everglades or whatever? Yeah. Uh, you know, hanging out with other mutant reptiles. <laughs> what I would have loved to see. What, like, But there's so much you could have done with this. Like, if, oh, it, yeah. if, like, midway through the episode, Shredder was in prison because of this damn robot and he broke out all the other criminals. Like, uh, that would have been fun. That could have yeah. been something. But instead, like, Leonardo's having some sort of spirit quest and it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Yeah. There's so many angles. There's so, there, you've got the well, other turtles shame, or elsewhere. Well, it's this is a really good premise, actually. Yeah. It's a yeah. really good premise. You have mutant ninja turtles. Okay, so Mutant Ninja Turtles is a good premise. But it goes It's nowhere. unique, for sure. Yeah. Well, and what... But yeah, they never use April. I mean, April is like a TV reporter, and they never use her as a storyline of... Other than she has an asshole know, co-worker who yeah. puts her off the air. <laughs> I liked him. Vincent. Vincent, who just like... <laughs> and April, the former anchor person, is in jail now. And she, he was like, oh, Vincent. And you're just like, whack. And he like... <laughs> That's pretty good, though. Running jokes? Yeah, that was good. That's pretty good. We didn't give it enough credit for having running jokes. See, but what this should have been... In, since it's supposed to be kind of this kid version of like how weird comics are, which they still kind of get that. You should have been more like the tick where other hero like people show up. Like that's why Casey Jones is a cool character because mm. he is actually just a vigilante with a hockey mask on hitting people with a hockey stick. That's kind of fun. Yeah. That's not in this show so far. That's not mm. in these episodes. There's no sense of fun other than the fact that they think they're making jokes and they're actually not making jokes. That's not what jokes are guys. Not that I'm funny, but like that's, but they're really just kind of setting up punchlines and hoping. Yeah. But the Turtles don't laugh at each other. So you can, mm-hmm. like, if you're a kid, you don't think anything's happening. Oh, that is, that's a really good point. You know, they all have little one-liners when they punch someone in the face or stab them with their weapons. But, yeah, no one else goes, yeah, good one, Raph. Like, <laughs> well, like there's no, like, damn, that was creative. That's why Animaniacs no, like, no works. One reacts. Yeah. Well, but Animaniacs works because they'll do the wah, wah, like, yeah. <laughs> or they'll do a rim shot, like because they're aware of what they're doing. Here, yeah. they're they're just expecting someone to laugh. But it does have in these in these three random episodes we saw, we had two self aware jokes about the show itself. Yeah, like staring at the camera. We know where this is a TV show that you're watching. So, but they seem to have more, more awareness of, of the audience than they actually do of the other the other characters in the room. I think there's no true relationship there. I mean, they're brothers, quote unquote, but that's not anywhere in the writing, really, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. No the actual, yeah. yeah, there's no writing that actually establishes relationships. Other than that they kind of hate on each other like brothers do. They're like, you know, hey, time to wake up and have breakfast. But before breakfast, we have to practice, guys. It's just... Yeah, exactly. Okay, Nothing funny. And then April just kind of being like, you guys, as the put upon woman hey in the show. Like, hey, guys. That, that's April's character. Hey, guys. Where's my camera? What's like, going on, guys? Where's the action? And I don't remember local news in the 80s, but like, there wasn't just a person with a camcorder and saying it's the news, right? Did I miss it? <laughs> yes, you missed it, April. They just turned the camera back onto themselves. I'm April O'Neil reporting from. Hold on, and turn the camera around. There, that. I'm reporting from that. Which. No one else works at this station. I haven't seen much of the new movies other than like the honest trailers and crap because I can't be bothered and the fact that they're talking about getting turned on by April which is really uncomfortable yeah Mm. but at least Will Arnett's in it he apparently if you just offer him a sandwich he'll show up for your movie but he can be the comic relief let's do it and so he's Uh April's cameraman so yeah, when there she you says go. something and it's not funny, he can be like, well, that sucks. Which yeah. is what April, that's what Will Arnett does. Yeah. That's what you need. <laughs> that's what you and need. I feel like Casey Jones would probably bring some of that and that's what if Casey we had Jones watched did. an episode with him in it. I mean, that's what being he was Being another human with, with some personality. No. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we're yeah. about at 35 minutes here. Um, so I think this is our time to wrap it up. Um... God, it's not even embarrassed. This was just disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> it's disappointing. I mean, this is the whole point of, of myopia is 
to uh, ruin your memories. Yeah. <laughs> I, I but was, other than the intro song, did you actually have any memories of this show? No. Because I, I don't no. think I did. Not at all. Um, I remembered more from the video game than this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The video game's very good. I remembered more of the, you know, the movies that we, we talked about. Um, but yeah, besides the theme song, the not, reason- not a whole lot of it was in my head going, you know, there wasn't an episode where, where I thought, oh, we should watch that episode. I just mm-hmm. wanted to pick the earliest one we could find, basically. No. <laughs> just to get a spread over the series. It was just a really failed show. Like, I know I already brought up Jim and Holograms, but I do remember specific <laughs> episodes of that show from my childhood. I remember specific songs they sang because Jim and the Holograms were a music group. Yeah. There was one episode that was all about a little orphan girl finding her father who she thought had been killed in Vietnam. <laughs> Like yeah. legit, I haven't seen that that episode of that show in twenty something oh years, and I remember that. But but Ninja Turtles had an episode about getting shredded mozzarella. Oh my god! Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. I remember the jaywalking scene. I didn't even remember what happened or why they were arrested for jaywalking. I just remember that it happened. Like this is this is a completely forgettable show. It's it's comically bad. Yeah. This is absolutely the definition of of just being the right show at the right period of time for the right age group. It does not work at all now. You can sit a six year old or ten year old in front of this and have them enjoy it. Yeah. Today, no, not at all. And I, neither neither can we. And we grew up on it. So the best part is the theme song. Watch the, watch the intro. There's a long form that like I think was in the pilot. It's like a minute and a half long. It's great. Ooh. Yep. Um, but um, that's the end of Saturday morning cartoons, kids. Uh, so <laughs> tune in. Okay. So before I give the hint for the next episode, next month is going to be a little bit weird um, because we are doing a movie in honor of a release. Um, so the first week of October, which would usually uh, be a horror movie, because October, we're going to do horror movies all of October, is a switch em up um, where we're going to do, um, well, we're going to do a movie in honor of a release that's coming out the first week of October. So I'll do a hint when we get there. But that means... I'm intrigued. I know. <laughs> which means our next animated movie, or our next animated show, our next my- Myopia Mornings, instead of being the last week of September, is going to be moved up a week. So we can still do four horror movies for the month of October. <laughs> the hint for that, other than that it's a Nicktoon, is it's the only Nicktoon whose creator was kicked off by the end of the first season. So uh, tune in next week and every future week when we put another little piece of your past on trial. Bye, guys. Myopia Mornings is hosted by Nick Hoffman, Scott Miller, and Aaron Greer. It is edited by Aaron Greer and produced by Dude Letter Podcasting and Myopia Defender Childhood. The theme song is Buddy from bensounds.com. We are part of the ESO network. Follow us on Facebook at Myopia Defender Childhood. Rate and review us on iTunes. We'll be back next month with another bowl of cereal and Myopia more. Thanks. 